So Tracy, you arrived in the mid-80s to play volleyball. Talk about your memories of the program. Well, um, yeah, I arrived here in, in 1983 and actually uh, uh, chose to come to Acadia, not because it was a volleyball powerhouse at the time, like it is today. <laughs> um, but uh, I came here actually for academic reasons, um, to take pursue a degree in computer science. There was only two schools in, in the country offering full-blown degrees in computer science at the time, and Acadia was, uh, was one of them. Um, but part of what attracted me to Acadia, rather than the other school, <laughs> so, uh, was the, uh, the caliber of sports. I've grown up as a sports junkie and a sports fan my entire life. Um, and, uh, but the athletics program was, was always really strong here. Uh, and it was a combination of the athletics and academics um, that, uh, that drew me here. And I have to say it was singularly the best decision of my entire life. Uh, coming here. That's awesome. So speaking to your starting of the men's volleyball program, as a student athlete that would have been really challenging, so how and why did you get that program off the ground? Well, as uh, the bio sort of explained, I was on the, uh, uh, the Nova Scotia provincial team at the time when I, when I first arrived here. And when I arrived on campus and over the next subsequent couple of years, there were a number of young guys that were here on campus um, that played on their respective provincial teams throughout Atlantic Canada. And, uh, but they, like me, chose to come to Acadia for academic reasons. And uh, so a few of them had approached me and said, geez, why isn't there a men's team here in Acadia? And in uh, one of the sort of hallway conversations I had um, towards the end of my second year and into the third year, uh, was with, uh, with our then athletic director, the late Don Wells. And um, just, you know, Don was, was a leader who made it a point to get to know all of his athletes. And it didn't matter male, female, it didn't matter whether you were on the national championship football team or on, you know, a, 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 a kind of an up and coming volleyball team. Don treated us all um, as his athletes. And just as he was going to do, he's, we were having a conversation. And, I asked the question, I just relayed the question to him, and he looked at me, he stepped back and he says, that's a really good question, we don't have one, but why don't we start one? And I looked at him and thought, this kind of lost his mind. <laughs> um, but, uh, but what a gift um, for him to give, you know, a young 19, 20 year old woman. Um, and Kevin, you said it perfectly earlier, there were no lim limits. Don taught me there was no such thing as a glass ceiling. You know, in a male-dominated sort of world of sport, here's a 19, 20-year-old young woman that he is kind of handing a mantle to and saying, here, go start this and go do this. And, and uh, you know, he supported me every step of the way. And um, it just just a, a gift of leadership. And, and Stuart, you said it. It's like a leadership school here. Um, but uh, because Acadia does build leaders, and that was probably... Um, the, the single best gift from a, a leadership development program that anybody could have ever given a young woman. And um, so, uh, you know, all, all credit to Don Wells um, for creating that kind of a culture. And what I love about today is, you know, Kevin, you've sort of picked up that, that mantle, that culture. And in my estimation, this is probably a bad thing to say in the sports world, but you put it on steroids. <laughs> There are no steroids here, I know that. <laughs> um, but in terms of, uh, of just a culture of, of equality and respect and, um, uh, and the forging and bringing together the intersection of the academics, the athletics, and, and uh, community engagement and involvement in leadership development, I don't think there's a better place on this planet where you can come and, and, and learn to stretch and grow um, like, like you can here at Acadia. There just isn't another place like it. And lastly, what is your fondest memory of life at Acadia? Uh, there's probably a couple of them, and, and a lot of folks have talked about the relationships, you know, that, uh, uh, that you built. Um, and, you know, just an example of it. And it wasn't just within the athletic community. It expanded well beyond that. You know, my best friend from university, Heather, is here. And uh, so 32 years later, you know, we're still really close, and uh, um, I think it's, it's those kinds of things, like that, that's a special friendship. Um, and, 
you know, it, it, it didn't have to be from athletics. And that's, again, the beauty of Acadia is you're meeting people from all across the campus because it is so small and so intimate. And it gives you the ability to form those bonds that are, that are unbreakable. And what's really cool for me is, is you know, I've, I, that's probably, you know, my strongest takeaway. That, and, and like I said, the gift that, and it really was a gift that Dawn um, gave me. Um, but in addition, it's the, there is a bond that transcends the time that you were here. Um, you know, I, I continue to develop new relationships and new friendships um, with the incredibly, you know, talented young folks that are here today, whether they're, you know, coaches, um, staff, athletes like you guys. Uh, it's just, you know, it continues to fill my heart and fill my soul. Thank you so much, Tracy.